What? Wes Duhal, and welcome back to Learning Old English with the Word Horde. We'll be continuing nouns today. Uh, today, uh, you should have finished memorizing the last of the nouns list, nouns three, and you'll see here in this post, I have got a quiz for you uh, with uh, all of the nouns three words. And in addition to that, you'll see that I have, uh, as always, uh, some review of nouns from uh, the other list. Just highlight that and you can, after you've taken the test and you'll see the right answer. And the, the vocabulary that we're learning for next time will be the verbs, which I'll go over in a little bit. Also, in terms of memorizing your uh, pronoun paradigms, you should really be making some real progress on that. Now, I have, up until this point, been allowing my students in class to use their magic sheets to fill them out. Starting this Thursday, that won't be permitted anymore, and uh, they will be required to fill in the demonstrative pronoun paradigms without any help from the magic sheet. These pronoun paradigms will be very helpful for working with the nouns that we're going to be working with today. Uh, and those are, by the way, tables 5.4 and 5.5 in Peter Baker's uh, book. But on to chapter 6 about nouns. We started talking about this a little bit last time. These noun paradigms can be a little bit uh, intimidating because up until this point you've been trying to memorize all these pronoun paradigms and just when you feel like you might be getting a handle on that we throw these new paradigms at you. Well, don't panic. There are actually a lot more patterns here than you might have assumed. First of all, many of them act very similarly to the way uh, that the pronouns act, uh, which you'll find very helpful in memorizing them. But also some of them act in ways that are kind of intuitive for modern English speakers. I'll give you some examples. If you look at table 6.2, which is the strong masculine, uh, strong masculines and neuters, you'll see that uh, they have stan, which is uh, the masculine, and the short neuter they give is ship, and the long neuter they give is thing. And stan, uh, in all three, all three of these masculine and both neuters, when they're the strong nouns are the same in nominative and accusative. Then we get to genitive. Genitive, you'll notice that they all have an ES ending. Well, in some ways, that makes sense to us as, a modern, English, as modern English speakers, because we're accustomed to making possesses by adding an S to the end, an apostrophe S to the end. So if you can remember, then, that in the strong masculines and neuters, it's an ES ending, that will maybe make a little bit of sense to you uh, as you're trying to, to remember it. Uh, also, I want you to notice the dative plurals. The dative plurals all have UM endings. If you look at table 6.3, the strong feminines, the dative plurals all have UM endings. If you look at the weak nouns, 6.5, they all have UM endings. And as you look through there, one thing you'll very quickly discover is that if you, if you see a noun with a UM ending, it is almost certainly dative plural. And uh, it helps to have that under your belt. That'll almost take care of anything you have to do uh, with the plural datives. Another thing that students can find uh, sometimes a little bit intimidating about these is, let's look at, for example, the strong feminines, 6.3. Uh, yevu, yevu, gift, which is, of course, one of your uh, vocabulary review words for today. Um, in nominative is yevu. But in accusative, genitive, and dative singular, it is always yefe. Whether it's possessive, or the direct object, or the indirect object, and you might be thinking, well, how am I going to follow that? How am I going to understand that? Don't worry. To the Anglo-Saxons, also, this had to be clarified. They didn't know any more than you would know. This would be a confusing sentence without having some other context to back it up. So sometimes the context will be clear from the sentence itself, whether we're talking about uh, whether we're talking about a genitive, uh, accusative, or dative. But the other thing that you will have is you'll have uh, the the feminine noun, um, or the, you'll you'll have the feminine noun or or any noun tied to one of those demonstrative pronouns, and when it's tied to the demonstrative pronoun, it will then usually tell you what it is. So, for example, uh, let's go back to the strong masculines and stan for stone. Well, nominative singular is stan, 
and accused of singular is stan. So how do we know if it's the object or the subject, uh, the, the subject or the object of the sentence? Well, one thing you'll know is that very often what the Anglo-Saxon writer will do is he'll write say, se stan, which is, if you remember, the nominative demonstrative pronoun, or thone uh, stan, which is the accusative of that pronoun. That way, you will be able to know what it is, because it would be just as confusing to an Anglo-Saxon as it is to you, to you today. Anyway, as you go through these uh, various nouns in here, look at these patterns, and don't let them intimidate you. You will, uh, you will get through this. Okay. Now also, we're going to uh, be moving on to something very exciting, we're doing our first translations. Now, right now you're thinking, oh, I don't have enough knowledge to translate. I can't do this. Again, don't worry about it. Okay. We're actually going back to the pronoun chapter, and we're doing Psalm 1, which is mini text A. Um, I noticed that this was down as of this recording on Peter Baker's site, so I have uh, posted uh, one that I copied from another site here, in case you don't have a, a, a hard copy of this book. And you're thinking, well, I know a few pronoun paradigms. I know a bunch of nouns and pronouns. I still haven't memorized any verbs yet. We're starting that this week. How am I supposed to do this? You can handle this. First of all, we'll just start by looking at the first few words here. The first word here is eadi, E-A-D-I-G. Well, you have no idea what that means. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn to the back of the book or if you have a dictionary, you'll, move, you'll, you'll go to the dictionary, and we're going to look up the word in the book. And when we get there, we will see that it means something like blessed. And in this case, it says, um, wealthy, prosperous, happy, or blessed. Since this is a psalm, I'd probably go with blessed, because I'm that kind of guy. Uh, and one thing you'll notice if you're looking at the glossary, is it says wealthy uh, adjective wealthy prosperous happy blessed masculine noun is singular and that has a, 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 a little a and then a backslash and then a one what that means is this is from line one of mini text a so you know already without knowing much about adjectives he's given you the information here to know this is masculine nominative singular since it's nominative this probably applies to the subject of the sentence, right? So blessed is the first word. Beeth. If you look up beeth, you will find it sends you to baon, which actually happens to be one of your vocabulary words that you're learning for next time, which is the verb to be. And once you do that, it's very quick you could very quickly realize that the word is blessed is. Okay? The next uh, word on there is say, S E. Well that's one that we're very familiar with. That's the, that is the demonstrative pronoun in the nominative. Uh, that is, in this case, going to be the. So we have blessed is the. And the next word, where, uh, you can look that up also. And if you look it up, one thing you'll realize is where our modern English word werewolf comes from. A werewolf is a man wolf. Where is man? So blessed is the man. So even with your very limited knowledge of Old English right now, through using your glossary, through using your dictionary, you should be able to work your way through the psalm. Also remember, this is Psalm 1. Uh, I do want to discourage you from using ponies, that is, using a, a, a tra another translation of the text. But if you get really, really, really stuck and you can't figure something out, open a Bible. Psalm 1 is in there. Now this is going to be a prose translation, I think of the Latin, uh, which then, of course, is a translation of the Hebrew, etc., 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 whereas your translation you're looking at uh, in your Bible is probably a modern English translation of the Hebrew. Nevertheless, it still should be enough to give you the clues that you need. Okay, before we go, I'm going to read to you your new vocabulary words uh, from the Verbs 1 list. Freman, which is to do. Helpan, which is to help, Beon, which is to be, Kunan, which is to know how to, uh, Magan, which is to be able to or may, Shulan, which is to be obliged to do something or must, 
Witan, which is to know. Shedan, which is to injure. Herian, which is to praise. Uh, Helan, which is to heal. Luvian, which is to love. And Quelan, which is to kill. So until next time, uh, work on this uh, translation. I'm confident that you've come a lot further in learning Old English than maybe you even suspected.